Welcome back. My name is Satyaji Sahu and today we will be solving the previous year questions of HPCL. Okay. So, we are in middle of you know series where we are discussing the objective questions for HPCL, well, TSPSC, GET. Yes, we are solving many questions. But today's session is targeting what? The previous year questions which are asked in HPCL. Now, First of all, we should understand that the aim of this previous year question session is that to make you aware of what type of questions will be asked in the HPCL examination. Now, don't think that by just studying these questions, you will be able to crack the examination. No, the aim of this particular session is to make you aware of the question pattern and also to make you understand that how much time it will take, what are the type of question, are the theoretical question or numerical question, right? So, whenever you are attending the sessions, don't think that by only attending the session, you will be able to crack the exam. You have to solve other questions also, okay? So, let us start the session, but before that, let us welcome our uh, participants. Uh, welcome uh, Juhi, Lakshmi, Vivek, Afrit, Varsarani, okay? So, welcome everyone to this session. Now, one small uh, notice that we are having a all India open mock test for the upcoming gate examination. So, those who want to register for this mock test, okay, you can download the Baiju's exam prep app, okay. You can download the Baiju's exam prep app and then register. The link is also available in the description. So, a short introduction about myself. Many students already know me. Those who don't know me, this is my short introduction. I have done my B.Tech and M.Tech from IIT Kharagpur. I have also cleared HPCL examination, okay? But I worked in Delhi Metro Corporation for a period of two years because I was selected into Delhi Metro also, okay? I have been teaching in more than 10 years, for more than 10 years and in more than 15 states. And I teach all the civil engineering subjects and general studies. Now, we will be conducting this session in two parts. First, I will be solving questions, okay. After one and a half hours or one hour, 15 minutes, Krishna sir will take over and Krishna sir will be solving the questions of RCC, environment and structural analysis and engineering mechanics. And in HPCL, it has been observed that many questions are asked from environment also. So, sir will be taking those things, environment, analysis, RCC, very important subjects, right? So, attend the session full, you will be benefited, okay? So, let us first start with other subjects and let us see that what questions they are asking in the uh, HPCL examination, okay? So, first of all, how many days are left? 24 days are left, so it's time to, you know, hurry up, okay? So, let us start solving the questions. The first question is, which of the following is classification of pile based on mode of transfer of loads. Tell me which is the right answer. Which of the following is a classification of piles based on mode of transfer of loads. See the options and then answer. It is what? Mode of transfer. Okay, based on mode of transfer. Karthi is very fast. Aptab is also very fast. That's great. That's great. Yes. We have end bearing pile, friction pile. Yes. So, suppose we have a pile like this, we'll have, you know, load transfer either end bearing like this, right, or friction or a combination of both. So, answer is D. You can say straight theory question, right? The next question is, what will be the reduced level? So, the previous question was, was geotech, right? The previous question was geotech, right? Now, you see, the second question is from surveying. The second question is from surveying. What will be the reduced level of top of a tower Q given in the figure with a accessible base and neglecting the effect of curvature and refraction? Reduced level of point P here is X. So, see the formula and tell me what is the right answer. It is written what? Neglecting the effect of curvature and refraction. So, tell me which is the right answer here, given, given options, four options, which is the right answer. B, 
Aftar is telling B, okay. Yes, the answer is B. You can see this is P, right? Here the label is X. You see this height of instrument will be what? X plus H bar. Yes, or H dash. And then you see this distance is D. So what will be this height? This height will be how much? This height will be equal to D tan alpha. Yes. So I can say QRL will be what? X plus H dash plus D tan alpha. Okay. If we were considering, if we are considering the curvature and refraction effect, then we have to subtract what? 0 0.073 D square, right? This is what? The correction. This is what? The correction. But it is written what? Here it is written neglecting. It is written what? Neglecting. So therefore we will neglect this, right? Therefore neglect this. So right answer is this. Okay, understood everyone? So this was the question of what? Survey. You can see that variety of questions are asked. Okay. Again, this is a direct thing, direct thing, direct which we learn in our classes. Now, next question is the following represents line joining the points of equal dip. Tell me the answer. Again, a question from surveying. Which is the following represent the lines joining points of equal dip. Tell me what's the answer. Karti is fast. Very good. Very good. C. Hmm. Equal dip is isoclinic. Isobar is what? Equal stress or equal pressure. Equal stress or equal pressure. Okay, many have answered C. Isogonic is equal magnetic declination. Okay, what is isogenic? It is equal magnetic declination, right? And then, what is agonic? Agonic is Z lines joining zero magnetic declination. Zero magnetic declination. Okay. Understood? So this is the right answer. Next question. Okay, this is from your, this is from your payment design, right? So a few days back, I was teaching, you know, expansion joint and contraction joint. So from this payment design, they have asked the formula for spacing of contraction joint in RCC payments, okay? In RCC, directly they have asked the formula. So can you tell the formula? Now once you tell me the formula, then I will explain also. Let us see that who answered this correctly. A few days back, I taught this also. In our evening classes, in our champion series, I took a class on expansion and this. So which is the right answer? Tell me. Okay, I'll just give some more time, otherwise I'll solve this. Okay, nobody is able to guess? Okay. I'll just give you some background theory to this. Remember that, if you're unable to remember for expansion joint, you can directly derive it. Okay? If you're unable to remember, it happens, right? We are not able to remember, then you can directly derive this. So it's not expansion, it's contraction, sorry. It's contraction joint. You can directly derive this. Okay, it will take less time. It will take very less time, you see. Okay, see, when it contracts, then the friction at the bottom, it will try to keep it intact. You see, it's trying to contract. So, the friction will be applied in the opposite direction, right? So, what we will do, we will see the equilibrium of half of this portion, half of the slab, right? So, you can see that there will be stresses acting like this. There will be stresses acting like this. Yes. Now, what happens when it is RCC? These stresses will be taken by whom? The steel. Right? These stresses will be taken by whom? The steel. Yes. Now, we will analyze half only. I will analyze what? Only half of the slab. I will analyze only half of the slab. Why I am explaining this? Because many students forget this formula. It is very difficult to remember the formula. So better is to understand the formula, right? Better is to understand the formula. You see, I have taken half. Now see, these are the stress in steel. Why stress in steel? Why stress in steel? Because it is RCC. So steel will take that stress, right? Because RCC steel is there. Now, 
how much maximum stress it can reach it can reach the permissible stress suppose that permissible stress is s that permissible stress is what s suppose s kg per centimeter square s kg per centimeter square very good now what will be the friction force the friction force will be the coefficient of friction into normal reaction and this coefficient normal reaction will be what the weight now weight will be what this weight i can say weight okay weight now weight will be what it will be the unit weight gamma unit weight gamma into volume right now what will be the volume of this you see this is half so it will be lc by 2 if the spacing is lc then half is lc by 2 half of the slab i am considering this is the width and this is the h right width h so bh right bh into gamma bh lc by 2 into gamma now this stress is acting on steel right on area of steel so this force will be what see this is the stress what will be the force it will be the stress into area of steel yes so these two forces will be in equilibrium right this force and this friction force i can say this friction force will be in equilibrium right so you can equate so s a is equal to f b h lc by 2 into gamma from here you see what i will get for lc lc i will get you see 2 sa right by you see gamma and then your f into what your bh so i just remember these things bh term should be at the denominator and a term should be at the numerator you see a is in numerator b is in denominator right f is also there here gamma they have replaced with what unit weight they have given in w so this is your gamma so the original formula is 2 sa by what your gamma f into bh here in place of gamma they have written what w so this is the formula understood you see understood everybody understood everybody now why this 200 is coming now in the examination they might confuse you right in the examination they might confuse they give 200 2000 i will tell you the explanation why it is not 200 or 2000 whatever i'll just give you explanation now we got the formula lc is equal to what just remember 2 into s then a by bh a by bh divided by gamma here it is w and then f this is the formula right this is the formula now what are the units they normally use the units they normally use is unit weight in kg per meter square meter cube stress in kg per centimeter square b in your meter and h in centimeter and area they use in centimeter square okay so this is centimeter square so if i put these units if i put these units what will happen this is centimeter square this is centimeter now this b is in meter so i should convert into centimeter right then what will happen centimeter square and centimeter square will get cancelled so this i will replace how by multiplying 1 by 100 right so now this becomes in centimeter this centimeter this centimeter square get cancelled now w the f has no units now w has units what w has units of kilogram per meter cube and stress has unit of kilogram per centimeter square so kg kg get cancelled this meter cube get to top now i have to convert this centimeter square into what into meter square so what will happen i will divide this centimeter square will be from what 10 to the power 4 right 10 to the power 4 it is a numerator by the way is numerator right so i can write down here 2 into s 1 by 10 to the power 4 right and this is what meter square into minus 4 sorry meter square right because 1 cm square is what 10 to the power minus 4 okay now i'm explaining so much because this formula they are asking a lot in many of the examination and students are getting thoroughly confused and most of you also got confused therefore i'm giving some explanation also okay now you see here what happened this meter cube is at top so meter right divided by w into f area this was 100 right 100 bh now this is what 10 to the power minus 4 will become what 10 to the power 
this will get cancelled i am getting how much 200 right this formula becomes what 200 s a by w into f b h yes everybody understood this formula this is lc in meter in meter and this s will be in kg per centimeter square this area will be in centimeter square this h will be in centimeter this b is in meter and this w is in kilogram per meter cube so everybody understood this formula yes or no so this is the right answer now i can could have, i could have just told that this is the right answer but i gave a explanation also because now everybody will be clear and they will never get confused whenever they see this question now you can see that they're directly asking you the formula but if you don't know the basics you may, might not be able to tell the formula also right now the fifth question okay so tell me this okay this is what the critical velocity as per kennedy theory you might be knowing the formula if you don't know the formula it is 0.55 m into depth to the power 0.64 where m is what it is the critical velocity ratio now use this formula and tell me the right answer it's an empirical formula okay so you should i'm good so tell me the answer now using this formula for finding what the critical velocity as per kennedy theory so direct direct formula question they have asked okay so this is from irrigation now this is question is from what from irrigation tell me the answer now Tell me the answer now. Yes, Vivek, correct. C. Yes, how? You see, 0.55, we have to use M. The critical velocity ratio is given 1.2. So, 1.2 Y to the power 0.64. And Y, the depth of flow is given what? 2.5 meter. So, 2.5. Easy. So, this becomes what? 0.66. 2.5 to the power 0.64. Now many students tell that, sir, this type of questions they will not ask in the examination because calculation is required. Yes, but they are very smart. What they will do? They will not ask you the final answer. They will ask you what in this format. See, the, the calculator is not available. You cannot calculate 2.5 to, to the power 0.64, right? You cannot find. Yes, but they are not asking you to find out the answer. They are just asking you to tell the expression, right? So therefore, it's very important that we go through all the formulas. They might not ask you to find out the answer. They might only ask you the expression putting the values, right? Now, next question is from irrigation only. Okay, tell me the answer to this. So very basic question from what? Your duty delta base period. Very basic question. Please answer quickly, quickly. There are only six questions. You have to solve 40 questions and then Krishna sir will also solve 125 questions. Okay. So please tell me the answer to this question. What's the answer? Okay, very good. Many are answering C. Very good. Yes, so 8.64 B by delta is equal to the duty. Now duty is in what unit? It is hectare. It is what? It is hectare per cumic, right? And this base period you should take in days, okay? And this you should take in meter, okay? So now from here, duty will be what? 8.64 base period is given how much 130 delta is already given in meter so this is 10 and 1300 okay but to remember this in examination what they might do they might give the delta in mm that time don't forget to take in meter okay so this is the right answer next question okay tell me this answer steel structure some questions from steel structures also you can see that they are very nicely jumbling the topics tell me the right answer to this s 
एच पर प्लास्टिक एनालिसिस ऑफ स्टील दे हैव आस्ट द सेफ फैक्टर सी दे हैव गिवन सम डायमेंशंस फॉर द रेक्टेंगुलर थिंग बट डायमेंशंस इज इंडिपेंडेंट राइट द सेफ फैक्टर इज ओनली डिपेंडिंग ऑन शेप सो इट शुड रिमेंबर इट इज व्हाट 1.5 सो कैन रिमेंबर फॉर स्टैंडर्ड शेप्स ओके आई हैव आल्सो टेकन वन लेक्चर्स ऑन स्टील स्ट्रक्चर्स यू रिसेंटली देयर आल्सो एक्सप्लेन रेक्टेंगल द शेप फैक्टर एफ द शेप फैक्टर एफ इज व्हाट 1.5 ओके for circle it is 1.7 or 16 by 3 pi right for triangle it is 2.34 for diamond it is 2 and for i section it is 1.12 to your 1.14 the standard things you can remember okay you can see that most of the questions are very straight forward but they are very diverse again they have asked you a question on angularity number which is what payment material again they have asked the direct formula right so it's very important that you go through the direct formula as first tell me the right answer to this the angularity number what is the angularity number tell me the right answer to this eighth b very good afrit yes the answer is b now what is this uh, angularity number this angularity number is the angularity number is the void percentage in excess of 33 okay this is what it is the void percentage in excess of 33 yes and therefore you can see it is what 67 why 67 100 minus 33 and then minus 100 you see this is w you can remember this as w a by c you can remember this as C or you can remember this as W W. What is this? I will tell. This is the this is the specific gravity of the aggregate. Okay, of aggregate. Remember of the aggregate, not other things. Now this is what you will take a cylinder. You will take a cylinder and then fill this cylinder with what? With aggregates. With aggregates. So this is what weight of aggregate. This is weight of aggregate. Then what you will do? You will remove this uh, particular aggregates and then fill the same space with what? Water. Same the same space with what? Water. So this C is what? This C is the weight of water. This the weight of water. So remember again you are seeing that directly they are asking questions from this. Okay. And remember that is angularity number varies from zero to eleven. And for good pavement material. it is considered to be what 7 to 11 is considered as good okay so direct question again next question ninth question okay from surveying again okay from surveying again tell me the right answer to this okay so what is the length of closing error what is the length of closing error the summation of latitude is given okay in the summation of departure is given what is the length of the closing error tell me very straight forward question somebody answered also arsenal very fast <laughs> very fast yes so this will be i can say the closing error will be root under the summation of the latitude that is how much i given 1.5 square and then departure so it's negative but doesn't matter because we are taking again square right Doesn't matter because we're taking it square, so it is two point two five. Again, you see, calculator is not required for such questions. It is root under two point five. This meter is actually outside, ah, huh? is actually outside. So root under two point five. Again, you see, they are understanding that you cannot find root under. Yes, some students can find. They know, but all cannot find. So they are not asking you to find out also. They are asking only the expression. Again, straightforward question. Tenth question: What is the maximum spacing of? Expansion joints, okay, okay, edge per IRC. Expansion joint. What is the maximum spacing of expansion joint in your concrete pavements? Some days before I took a class and I explained this also. What is the answer to tenth question? So many students are attending. So Sorab Sri also has come. Sorab Sri, Afri, Juhi, Bivek, so two. Very good, very good. Tell me the answer. Yes, one forty meter. Very good. Remember that for expansion joint, the maximum spacing is one forty meter. For contraction, it depends on it is 
your PCC or RCC, right? In case of RCC, the maximum spacing is how much? 14 meter in PCC, it is 4.5 meter. Okay, next question. Okay, so you see many curves are given here. And which of the following curves indicates poorly graded soil? Okay, so you have to, you know, see the diagram little carefully and tell me the answer, okay? You have to see the diagram little carefully. It is looking little complicated. Just have a, you know, look, have a, you know, strong look and tell me which of the following is a poorly graded soil. Tell me the option, huh? don't tell me the curve name. Tell me the option. Tell me the option, don't give me the curve name. Option is what? Curve B, okay, okay, okay. Curve B you are telling means what? D is the right answer. See, poorly graded means what? Uniformly graded. Poorly graded means what? It is uniformly graded. Uniformly graded means what? That all the particles are having same size. Means what? There will be a steep curve. When you can see the only steep curve here is what? The B1, right? You can see it is quite steep. That means what? All the particles are lying in this range, right? You can see. So it is what? Uniformly graded or poorly graded. Why poorly graded? Because if all the particles are of same size, then the voids cannot be filled by the smaller particles. So voids will be more. So answer is D here, which is curve B. So this was from soil mechanics. You can see that they are mixing all the topics, right? You can see here it was surveying, right? Then we have transportation. This is again from payment design. Again from payment design. So now, again you can see, one thing I want to tell. Now you can see that there are no questions from geometric design. Doesn't mean that they will not ask questions from geometric design. Understood? Just because some questions were not there in the previous year question, don't make a conclusion that they won't be asking this time. Okay? So here we are trying to understand the nature of the question. Don't see that, okay, no questions from geometric design, so I'll leave geometric design. No. Or no questions, you know, from some topic, so I'll leave that topic. That is not the conclusion. Here you should see what type of questions are asked. Okay? So this question is over. So this is from your soil mechanics. Okay? Soil mechanics or geotech, I can say. Okay. And previous question was from your payment design. Now next question. The twelfth question. Yes. Okay, so now a question from traffic engineering. Tell me the right answer to this. Pick our factor. Something, something they have written. Now tell me what is the right answer to this. Again, direct formula best. Direct formula. Traffic engineering, direct formula. Give me the answer to this. I'll just have some water by that time. Twelve is C, right? Is the ratio of number of vehicles counted in the peak hour and four times and four times the number counted during the highest fifteen consecutive minutes, right? The peak hour factor is what? Actually equal to the peak hour volume divided by what? Four into the maximum volume in any consecutive 15 minutes, right? Now, this can take other forms also, right? If you are taking what? If you are taking the 10 minute consecutive, highest 10 minute consecutive, so this will become what? 6, right? So, here it was given 15 minutes. So, therefore, it will become what? 4. How are we getting this 6? In 1 hour, 60 minutes, 60 by 10. Here it is what? 60 by 15 because you're taking 15 minute interval right it can also be equal to what you can also be equal to cubic by what your 12 if you are taking what five minute interval okay so it depends on which minute interval you are taking okay here they have asked what here just ask the for highest 15 minutes would so become what four times if they have asked what highest 10 minutes then 6. They are asked what highest 5 minutes and not 12. Okay. So 4 times is the right answer. 12 and then 13. Okay. Very straightforward question from your hydrology. Right. Very straightforward question. Okay. From hydrology very straightforward question. They are asking the rainfall access. Rainfall access I took a class some days before. Right. And rainfall access nothing but what? The effective rainfall. Right. 
okay effective rainfall or i can say the excess runoff so what is the answer to this please tell me very easy question very easy question one centimeter you see this excess rainfall or effective rainfall is what the rainfall which is two centimeter here minus phi into t right the infiltration loss phi is what infiltration rate or i can say phi index that is given how much 0.25 centimeter per hour actually and the rainfall duration is four hours this becomes what one centimeter very straightforward question let us solve the next question 14th question very straightforward again from pavement design direct definition tell me the answer to this pavement design direct definition the ratio of contact pressure to the tire pressure is known as what yes it is known as rigidity factor is known as what rigidity factor so you can see that they are asking you again what they are asking again direct definition direct formulas okay now again a direct question from strength of material what is torsional rigidity okay what is torsional rigidity answer me this question very straightforward okay torsional rigidity is what they have given since what your modulus of rigidity is what it is your g and polar moment of inertia is j so right answer is what right answer is b yes torsional rigidity is nothing but what gj it is what gj so g is what modulus of rigidity and polar moment of inertia we know that your theta is what or angle of twist in case of what torsion is tl by gj tl by gj right now if we have unit twist unit twist means what this twist is one radian one radian and length is also one length means what one unit so what will happen so t will be equal to gj right in that case so this is known as the torsional rigidity or torsional rigidity can be defined as what it is the torsion required torsion required per unit twist per unit length right per unit twist per unit length and this is nothing but what the multiplication of the shear modulus or modulus of rigidity g and the polar moment of inertia you can see again a direct question direct definition the next question direct formula okay the von karman formula for estimation of what the hydrodynamic pressure acting on gravity dams right so again direct formula is asked you might be knowing this formula if you don't know it's an empirical formula so you should be knowing this formula what is the answer to this okay if you don't know then remember this formula okay this is covered under what forces acting on very good achu so forces acting on gravity dam okay in gravity dam there are lot of forces right okay we have earthquake force we have wave force we have you know seepage and hydrostatic it is what hydrodynamic force okay so this is what the answer d to remember this formulas you can see from so much time they are asking you straight straight formulas right so now if you are preparing for hpcl you should understand basic definition and your basic formulas should be there so now returning back to surveying again they are asking a question a numerical actually from surveying so tell me the right answer to this we have an old map which is drawn to the scale rf means what representative fraction that is what the scale the seat of the map shrinks with the shrinkage ratio of this this shrinkage is also known as what the shrunk ratio also known as what the shrunk ratio they're asking the corrected scale for the map they're asking what so vishal is answering okay something okay no no, no. that is the answer to the last question what is the answer to this question tell me i'll give you some time give you some time so fast 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 we are slow okay we are slow okay 1 by 2 200 let us see hmm others also please tell the formula is the corrected scale the corrected scale is equal to the wrong scale into the shrunk ratio or shrinkage ratio okay now here the wrong scale is the original scale right you see the wrong scale is the original scale because you when your the map has shrunk the original will become now wrong 
So now I have to find out the corrected scale, right? The corrected scale will be what? Or I can say this will be equal to the wrong scale which was how much? 1 by 2000 into shrunk ratio is given 20 by 22. So this will become what? 1 by 2200. So remember that the wrong scale is the original scale, right? Because once the map shrinks, the original will become the wrong one. And the corrected scale will be found out in this manner. The corrected scale will be the strung scale also, right? Yes or no? The corrected scale will be the strung scale also. Many students get confused with this formula. Therefore, I'm explaining this formula, okay? So wrong scale is nothing but the original scale because the original one after shrinkage of map became the wrong one. And the strung scale is the current scale or I can say the corrected one, okay? Now, next question. Okay, so this is from your airport, okay? So just have one, you know, important thing that since many of these PSU exam, they directly take questions or syllabus from the gate. So now in many of the PSU exam, they're asking questions from airport engineering also. They're asking many of the questions from airport engineering also. So this question is maximum value of longitudinal gradient or permissible gradient for taxiway as per different types of airport, okay? As per different types of airport. You might not be knowing this answer. So I'm telling, so for type A and type B, this limit is 1.5% and for type C, D and E, this is 3%. Now see, for type C it's given 3%, okay. For type E it's given 3%, okay. For type B is given 1.5%, okay. For type A, it is given what? It is given your 1%. This is the wrong one, right? Because it should be 1.5. This is the right answer. So again, you can see that again, this has been from direct the recommendation by whom? By ICAO, International Civil Aviation Organization. So the guidelines by International Civil Aviation Organization for taxiway, okay, and runway, all these things you should know because now there's they're asking in gate also and in your uh, PSU examination also you should be little aware of this. Now the next is the 19th question. The 19th question. It is based on Webster signal design, right? So this question is from what? Traffic engineering. So how to solve this question? Okay, I'll give you the formula. You might be knowing the formula. You can start trying. Okay. It's a two-phase system, okay? And we know that the cycle length is what? 1.5 times the lost time plus 5. 1 minus the sum of or summation of critical flow ratios. Now, the sum of critical flow ratios is given what? 0.5. Now, lost time, how to find out? How to find out lost time? The lost time will be number of phases into the time lost per phase plus all red time. Now in the gate exam, they don't, and ever they have asked a question on all red time, but here you see they give, right? This is all red time. All red time is the time when all the signals are red. Okay, this is to clear the traffic in the intersection if the traffic is very heavy. And this is the number of phases, okay? Number of phases, and this T is what? T is what? T is your lost time per phase. You can see that in this question, the lost time per phase is not given. Remember that the default value of this is 2 second. Remember that the default value of lost time per phase is 2 second. Understood? The lost time per phase is 2 seconds. Remember this fact. Okay? Sometimes they might not give. You have to take what? 2 seconds. Okay? And the default value of red time is what? It is zero if nothing is given in the question. It is the default value. But here it is given 13 seconds. So therefore, I will take R as what? 13. Now tell me the answer. What is the right answer here? Tell me. Now tell me the right answer. So it is a good question. Okay, I can say direct formula, but little good question because they have not given the lost time per phase. Okay, they have not given the lost time per phase. So now you can put 1.5. The lost time will be how much? N will become here 2, 2 fetch. So 2 into 2 is 4. 4 plus 13 is 17, right? So 17 
plus 5 1 minus your 0.5 so this will become 1 point divided by 0.5 or I can say multiply by 2 now you can do this calculation also right you can do this calculation so this will become what 3 into I'll, sorry I'll multiply 2 into 1.5 3 into 17 is 51 plus 10 that is how much 61 second so you can do this calculation without the calculator also okay with the calculator also good morning Sachin okay so you can see that some good questions are also asked therefore should be aware of formula very nicely now next question is from what is from railway engineering is from railway engineering here it is given the steepest gradient permitted okay steepest gradient permitted for a four degree curve for a meter gauge line the ruling gradient is the existing gradient is given 0.62 so how we find out the stiffest per or we can say the permissible gradient the permissible gradient how we get this yes the permissible gradient or I can say this is the compensated gradient right that is equal to the actual gradient that is 0.62 percent or initial one is the initial one minus what the grade compensation right minus the grade compensation Thank you Sachin, thank you Sachin. You can see other videos also. I have taken lectures on RCC, Geotech, Environment, Concrete Structures, Open Channel Flow and Fluid Mechanics. You can see other lectures also. Thank you very much for encouraging words. So grade 0.62 minus what? Grade compensation. Now, how to find out the grade compensation? What is the grade compensation here? Tell me. Just tell me the grade compensation. Tell me the grade compensation. It's a four degree curve. Let us see who answers. What is the grade compensation here? Tell me. Only the grade compensation. Yes, SOM for mechanical and civil is same. 98.99% same. Nothing different. Strength of metal is same. Tell me grade compensation. What is the grade compensation? Forgot. Okay, students have forgot. So I'll repeat. You mind. The grade compensation, you should remember, it is 0.04% per degree. But this is for which curve? This is for broad gauge. This is for broad gauge. But it is what? It is meter gauge. For meter gauge, it is 0.03%. And for narrow, it is 0.02. So very good, Santu. So here it is 0 0.04, right? So it will be 0 0.04 and sorry, 0.03 sorry, 0 0.03. Why? It is given meter gauge. Okay, so please read the question carefully. So it is 0 0.03 into 4. That is what? 0.12%. If you do this subtraction, you will get how much? You will get this as 0.5%. And 0.5% is what? 0.5 divided by 100. That is what? 1 is to 200. So I can say this is a straight question, but it's a good question, right? Straightforward question, but a good question because it twisted by giving what? Meter gauge. Understood? Very good. Okay. And I'll answer to Sachin. Strength of metal is same for mechanical and civil. So you can attend this. Everything is same. Okay. And how to judge? Once you attend my lectures from center material, you can, you know, go and solve your previous question mechanical. You will be able to solve 99% of the question. 1% I will always give a factor of safety. Okay. <laughs> so 20 questions are over. Tell me the right answer to this. What is the maximum? Oh, see, what, what a coincidence. <laughs> we are discussing strength of metal and the question from strength of metal also came. So what is the value of? What is the value of maximum shear stress, shear force? Okay. Now we should know that, you know, the maximum shear force. Okay. We know the formula, right? Here the reaction is WL by 6. Here the reaction is what? WL by 3. So you see all the standard cases you should be remembering. Okay? In case of your... Hello? In case of your... In case of your strength of material and, you know, shear force bending moment diagram, you should remember all the standard values, right? Like this, we know that for this particular case the shear force diagram is something like this right yes it is something like this here it is w l by 6 and here it is w l by 3 right and therefore the maximum value is what w l by 3 this is w 9 l is how much 6 
divided by 3, I am getting how much? I am getting this value as what? 18 kilo Newton. The answer is A. Now, this is 6 meter. Do you remember where we get this geo shear force? Do you remember where we get this geo shear force? Any, you know, any memory you have? Yes, we get in L by root 3, right? We get in L by root 3. This distance is what? L by root 3. And I can say from here, L is how much? 6 by root 3. I can take this 6 as what? 3 into 2. So this becomes what? 2 into root 3. That is how much? 1.73 into 2. I can say 3.46 meter, right? So they can ask this question also, right? That where we get the zero shear force. So this is a standard case of shear force and bending moment diagram. And you can see that it is very important. All the standard cases of shear force and bending diagram of what? Of your, sim, you know, cantilever beam, simply support beam. Okay. You should remember that. Or when the, uh, we can say, the standard case of what? Your overhanging beam. So all the standard cases you should remember the rightly asked in the examination. Next question is, the combined correction value due to refraction and curvature. Okay. This is from surveying again. Is the right answer to this? The right answer to this. So combined correction. You see, what is the curvature correction? It is minus 0 0.0785 d in kilometer square. This is due to what? Curvature. Right? And refraction is what? Refraction is just half, 1 by 7th of that. So that comes and it is positive. So it comes what? 0 0.0112, right? D kilometer square. The combined one is how much? Minus 0 0.0673 D kilometer square. Right? So in this case, it will be how much? 0 0.0673 and d kilometer take the distance in what kilometer so what into 4 now you can do this multiplication you can do this multiplication and this is coming what 0.269 so again what a direct formula if they ask you curvature then this is the answer right if they ask you refraction this is the answer this is what the combined one you should know them separately also because in some examination they ask you the separate also they ask you what for combined sorry for curvature or for refraction and remember that this refraction is one is what? Is 1 by 7, right? It is 1 by 7. Remember this fact. Next question, it is from your capillary rise. So what? Geotech. Capillary rise, geotech. Now, the height of capillary rise is what? It is C by E void ratio D10, right? And in this formula, it's an empirical formula. Remember that this is in centimeter. This should be in centimeter square. And this would be in your centimeter. Okay. Or if you are converting everything to mm square, I can take in mm also, right? I can take in mm also. This becomes what? This will become mm square. Yes. And this will become mm. Yes. And effective size is d10. So if I find out the height of capillary rise, this will be 30 by what? The void ratio is given 0.5 and effective size is given 0.015. So this answer is in mm. If I want to convert into meter, because the answers are given in meter, so I'll multiply what? 10 to the power minus 3. Right? So this will become, you see, 30. This will become 10 to minus 3 will become what? 0 0.03 by 0 0.5 into 0 0.015. Again, you can do the calculation getting how much? 4 meter. Okay? Again, a straightforward direct formula. Okay? Next question, 24th question. And this is again from soil mechanics. It is again from what? Soil mechanics. Okay. Again, direct formula. It is asked what? Find out the coefficient of volume change. Find this answer. Tell me. Let us see. I will just not solve this question first. Let us see uh, how many of you are able to solve and who solves this question first. Coefficient of volume change. Let us see. some water by that time. 
Now we have solved many questions like this when we were discussing the objective questions for your soil mechanics, right? What is asked here? MB is asked, na? Yes. It is MB. MB is what? Delta E by delta sigma 1 plus E naught, right? So what is the answer? Okay, Vishal is telling D. See, D, Vishal, that is what? That is AV. That is AV, right? Yes, AV is what? Delta E by delta sigma, right? Answer is A, okay? See, there is coefficient of, you know, change and coefficient of volume change. This is what? Coefficient of change or I can say coefficient of compressibility. This is what? Coefficient of compressibility, right? So, coefficient of compressibility is this one. Yes? This is what? This is coefficient of volume compressibility or I can say coefficient of volume change. So, this is delta sigma is 0 0.05, 0 0.06 minus 0 0.55 and the change in stress is how much? It is 50 and then 1 plus initial stress which is given how much? 0 0.6 because change from 0 0.6 to 0 0.5. So, 0 0.6. Okay. So, this is you know 1000. So, 1 by 1600 and unit will be what? This is kilonewton per meter square, right? This delta sigma. So, it will become what? Reverse meter square per kilonewton. See, if you are finding AV, then it is what? 0 0.05 by 50, that is how much? 1 by 1000. AV is what? Coefficient of compressibility. Okay, yeah. Other two options we can eliminate by, you know, this only. So, here you see the only confusion was what? People will get confused between coefficient of compressibility and what? Coefficient of volume compressibility. So now you will not get confused. This is the right answer. So like this in Geotech, I have solved many questions, right? So I have three to four videos. I have solved many questions in Geotech. You can search in this particular channel or go search in YouTube also. You can just write down what? HPCL, Geotech, Satyaji Sahu. <laughs> you will get lot of objective questions, okay? You will get lot of objective questions. I have solved... I have taken three lectures, 50, 50, 50, one on foundation, one on compressibility and consolidation and one on the soil mechanics, okay, the basic soil mechanics. And also for this series also I have taken 50 questions, okay. So all these questions you can always revise. Okay, 25th question, again this is from your hydrology. Now this is what? A direct memory based question. You can see that some, the memory based questions are little less, more are from the basic concepts and from formula. But some memory based questions also they can ask. I am directly giving you the for answer. For a evapo, evapo, evapo meter, okay, what is the pen we use? The standard pen we use, okay. So if you see its dimension, okay. So for this, this is how much? This is your diameter 1.22 meter, and this depth is how much? 25.5 centimeters. So remember this, okay? So this is the value. This is the value, okay? Next question is, which type of slow failure of soil is represented by the given failure diagram? Very straightforward question. Tell me, which is again soil mechanics? Again soil mechanics? Tell me the right answer to this. Which type of slow failure? You see, this is the two, okay? Okay? Now tell me, this is the base, right? This is the base. Now tell me what is the answer here? <laughs> Very straightforward. <laughs> it is what? Base rotational failure. You see, this failure surface is ending here. It is what? Base rotational failure. If it was ending here like this toe, then I would have told toe rotational failure, right? It is ending where? End the base. So base rotational failure. Direct question. 27th question. Okay. This is from fluid mechanics. This is coming from fluid mechanics. Some questions from fluid mechanics also. You can see that all the topics are touched, right? So we cannot leave any topic. Now, after my this session, after this session, Krishna sir will also take you know questions on environment, RCC, and analysis. 
so you can see that those questions are missing here those questions will be taken by krishna sir so attend that session also, also okay after i end krishna sir will take over and many questions are asked from environment environment many questions are asked so please you know see that you understand what type of questions are asked from environment also krishna sir will explain to you okay so fluid mechanics okay the direct formula what is the direct formula okay shear stress is what santu has already solved shear stress is what it is the dynamic viscosity into what the velocity gradient now if we have two plates i have already taken a class on this right many lectures we have taken on this so two plates it is moving in v velocity then i can say here it is v here velocity is v here the velocity is zero and the distance is h so du by dy will become how much it will become v by h right change in velocity by change in distance right so it is given mu is given 1.2 the velocity difference is given how much 2 meter and the gap the space the h is given how much 12 mm but i'll convert in 100 units 12 into 10 to the power minus 3 because this asked in newton per meter square so everything i'm converting into what newton and meter so answer is how much 200 again direct formula next question so this was from fluid mechanics next question okay about traffic signal you see even if you don't know this question you can answer from common sense traffic good traffic you can answer this question from common sense also very straightforward question you can answer from common sense also answer answer <laughs> this is you know, common sense very common sense question this is very common sense question <laughs> Hmm. Yes, the answer is C. Yes, a right hand, right hand, right, right angle collisions means some vehicle is coming like this, some vehicle is coming like this. So intersection, these type of collisions are what? A lot. So it reduces. Rear end means what? Some vehicle is standing like this and some vehicle hits it from the back. So rear. Now tell me, even if you design the signal, some mad person will always be there. Even if the vehicle is standing in the signal, that mad person might come and, you know, hit in the rear end, right? So we can't avoid that, okay? We can't, you know, avoid that. Now we can penalize them, but you can't avoid by just having a traffic signal. This is the right answer. So common sense also, we can solve questions. Okay, now this is from where? This is from your basics of geometry design, yes? Okay, basics of geometry design, that is the camber, right? Camber. So tell me the right answer to this. I'll explain it also. I will tell you how to remember. In many classes, I have told how to remember this camber. I have already taken a lecture on camber and super elevation, which can be found in this particular channel. You can attend that question also, at lecture also. But tell me what's the right answer. Okay, Santu is writing D. Okay, very good, Santu. Others? D, very good. Now these things are little difficult to remember. So I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. How to remember? I'll give you a hint. First remember the best roads are what? Concrete, cement concrete, right? Cement concrete. Okay, cement concrete. And I can say thick bituminous. Thick bituminous. Okay. Then we have thin bituminous. Okay, thin bituminous. Then we'll have water bound macadam. Okay. And then the last we can say earth ones, earth roads, okay. Then here light rainfall, I lie down here, thick one, okay. Then we have here light rainfall and here it is heavy rainfall, okay, very good. Now the slopes are represented in what manner? The slopes are represented in one in n manner. 1 in n. 1 vertical is 2 and horizontal. Okay. Now see, if the n is less, the slope is more, right? You see? You can see that here n is less, right? The slope is more. So I can say that less n, more slope. More slope. Now tell me, if there is heavy rainfall, heavy rainfall compared to light, n will be more or less? For heavy rainfall compared to light, n will be more or less. Tell me. n will be more or less. Tell me. Compared to light, if I am seeing heavy, 
but to light i am saying heavy n will be more or less for heavy n will be less you see for heavy more slope right for heavy more slope so less n okay so just remember the n thing remember the n table here it is 60 here it will be 50 obviously it should be less yes then this 50 comes here remember this is 50 again this is 40 this 40 comes here this is 40 33 these 33 comes here and then 25 so if you remember if you want to remember this whole table just remember few points 50 60 50 40 33 25 so it is easy to remember right it is easy to remember 60 50 40 33 25 and then you can directly draw this table within what half a minute also within half a minute if you don't remember also you can just write down there Yes, very easy. Yes. Now, what is asked here, you see? Now, you see, very easy. Water bound megadam and gravel. And it is what? Heavy. So, for heavy and water bound, it should be 1 in 33. Correct? Yes. Next is what? Cement concrete and high type. Bituminous high type is thick. Yes. So, cement concrete, 1 in 50 for heavy. Yes. Correct? Yes. Next is earth surface, heavy. It is how much? 1 in 25, correct. Last one is, for thin vitamins, what? 1 in 65, yes. Actually, it is what? 1 in 40. 1 in 40. Yes, so it is wrong, right? So this is the right answer. Now, here they have given what? The camber in this 1 in N. They can give, also give in what? In percentage. Now, how we find out the small N percentage? It is nothing but 1 by N into 100. Now, if you remember this N, you remember the percent also, right? Yes. Don't remember the percentage. Don't remember the percentage, but remember the percentage. How? This will become what? 1 in N, 1 by 60 into 100 will become how much? 1.67%. This is 1 by 50 into 100, 2%. This is also 2%. 1 by 40 into 100, 2.5%. Right? This is also 2.5%. Right? Then 1 by 33 into 100 is almost what? 3%. Right? Yes. Okay, this is also 3% almost, and this is almost 4%. So, everybody remember this table now, right? Anything they ask, you can easily answer. Okay, so I gave you the logic also. Now, next thing is very straightforward question from soil mechanics. Please answer me this question. Very straightforward question from soil mechanics or geotech, I can say. Very straightforward question. Ratio of liquid limit minus the natural water content divided by what? The plasticity index this is known as what? What is this? What is this? This is D consistency index. Okay. Students might get confused in liquid index. Liquid index is what? It is the natural water content minus the plastic limit by the plasticity index. Okay. And what is flow index? It is the slope of, it is the slope of what? The curve, where we draw curve between what? The water content versus what? Log of number of blows for determination of what? Your uh, liquid limit, right? And this is what? This toughness index is nothing but what? This is flow index. This toughness is nothing but what? the ip by if okay so all these things they can ask basic again basic definition 31st okay this is fluid mechanics you can see very straightforward question it is based on your continuity equation right so at a section diameter is 25 and another section what is happening diameter is reduced diameter is reduced right so here the speed is how much two meter per second here the speed we have to find out, right? We have to find out. Suppose x. Very easy. Here the diameter is 25 centimeter. Here the diameter is 20 centimeter. So I can say section 1, section 2. A1, B1 is equal to A2, B2. Now give me the answer for B2. Suppose this is B2. Very straightforward question. 31D. Why 31D? No. 
sí. A little question was 30, na? Yes. What is the answer to this? I can say pi by 4 into 25 square area into 2 is equal to pi by 4 into 20 square into your P2. So pi by 4, pi by 4 get cancelled. This is 625, right? So it becomes 30, 625 into 2, 1250 divided by 400. That equal to V2. I am getting how much? 3.125. 3. Point, again, simple formula. Very good. Okay, little long question from your soil mechanics. Which of the following is a false statement regarding your soil classification? Tell me the right answer. Read the statements. From geotechnical, read the statements and give me the right answer. Select the false statement regarding soil classification. Soil fails, you know. Means, uh, which is a fairly, means not a correct thing here. So read the, you know, things lines. You can eliminate also, you can eliminate also, right? It is only one false statement. So once you find out the false statement, it is false statement. What is ISC Indian Soil Classification System? A, B, C, D. Okay, confused. The answer is D. I will tell you what. I will tell you. First, I will explore the options. B, let us first explore B. Soil is broadly classified into coarse grain, yes, fine grain and highly organic soil. It is true. Okay, it is true. So, we have coarse grain. Okay. Then we have fine grained, right? And then we have what? Highly organic. We have what? Highly organic. Also known as what? The pit. Now, the fine grained soil is classified into three categories. That is also true. Fine grained is classified into what? Silt, right? M. And then what? Clay. This clay is what? This clay is inorganic clay. This clay is what? Inorganic clay. And it is written as what? Written as C, right? And then we have what? Organic clay. We have what? Organic clay. Okay? It is written as O. And only clay is also the inorganic clay. So this organic clay is different from highly organic soil. Okay? Understand that. It is different. So, second statement also correct. Now, coarse grain is divided into three categories. If the percentage fine, percentage fine, suppose I am writing this as, see, coarse grain doesn't mean that, you know, uh, fine percentage is zero. Means what? 50% or more is coarse. So, when this fine is less than 5%, okay, when it is less, it is greater than 12%, and then when it is between 5 and 12%, right? Yes? So, when it is less than 5%, so we classify into what? Either it is well graded or poorly graded. So, either gravel or what? Or sand, right? Well graded sand and poorly graded, well graded gravel, poorly graded gravel. And then well graded sand and poorly graded sand. Now, when the percentage is more than 12%, then I classify this as what? Silty gravel or clay gravel, right? And this I classify as what? Your silty sand or silt clayey sand. And when it is between 5 to 12, then I give the dual names. Means what? Like this. We give what? Dual names like this. All the combinations we see and as per the, I can say, you know, the rules we do. So I am not writing the rules here. This is for only gravel. We can go for the sand also. Okay, the rules, obviously, some other lecture we'll see. So, this question is what? In coarse grain soil, if fines are more than 12%, borderline cases require dual symbols. No, more than 12% don't. See, borderline can require, you know, dual symbols. Borderline can require if it is lying exactly at 12 or exactly something like that. But when it is more than 12%, 
then we will have only one symbol no dual understood yes understood what was the mistake understood and then obviously black cotton soils okay some soils can be above a line and can be below a line how because if you see the classification okay if you see the classification yes you know they can be see above the a line means what the clay is more and below it is silt is more yes the black soil can be having what more clay or more silty yes it can have both right okay so it is also true okay so the last was wrong everybody know this was a very good question right it's a very good question okay very good question we explained it also very nice 33 question identify the category of the traffic sign and the category okay and now you see from traffic now whenever they ask traffic sign na, you are not applying for you know the, to be traffic police okay so whenever they ask a question for traffic sign don't try to understand what the sign indicates try to understand that it falls in which category it is which category it is caution okay it is what caution or warning sign how to understand that see you cannot remember all the symbols inside right you cannot remember all the symbols inside remember that okay whenever it is caution or warning caution or warning that will be inside what a triangle right all the information all the informatory will be inside what your blue rectangle and all the rest which is what remaining is what the mandatory or the regulatory mandatory or what regulatory means what you have to follow otherwise you will be penalized like what like suppose you can say stop is an express exception like suppose no u-turn yes that is what mandatory one way it is mandatory it's not a warning okay so here from the you know shape of the sign we guess that it is what your cosmetic or warning no need to remember all the signs in the traffic we are not applying for traffic police post okay so don't try to remember that only remember this fact so remember this fact okay you can answer anything right you can answer anything okay very good next question coulomb friction is the friction between which surfaces or they're indirectly asking whenever we are taking the coulomb theory it's from you know geotech when you're taking the coulomb theory okay from coulomb theory the surface especially you know when you're taking retaining wall and all so in that time the friction is considered what between which type of surfaces or i can say the soil is considered what soil is considered what it is considered you know dry it is considered what dry understood that's not what dry next is calculate the turning radius of taxiway i told you right they're asking you questions from airport also basics of airports so you should be knowing that turning radius now the turning radius formula there are two formula okay okay so one is the generalized formula it is v square by 125 f okay there's another horan job formula also so horan job we will not remember now it is very complicated the bar from a very simple you know it is what v square by 125 f this is in meters and empirical formula this v is in what in kilometer per hour so you can see that the speed of turning this v is given 60 and friction is given 0.15 directly put this so 60 square divided by 125 f okay so how much are getting see we don't need a calculator here we need we don't need actually 15 by 100 so this becomes 4 this is 5 and this is again 4 if I divide 25 so this is 12 so 12 into 16 192 meter understood everyone how we are finding this turning radius okay how we are finding this turning radius now they have given subsonic jet planes okay so what is the thing here subsonic jet planes means what subsonic means traveling less than the speed of you know sound so for subsonic remember that this r minimum is 120 meter and for supersonic traveling you know more than the speed of sound this r minimum is how much the r minimum is your 180 so now you got how much 192 it is more than 120 right 
it is subsonic so we can adopt this the answer is what 192 meter if suppose the answer was you know 108 suppose the answer was 108 then I would have taken 120 because the minimum one is this so you can see that asking questions from variety of topics but again simple straight formulas okay you should be knowing 36th question the minimum depth of foundation as per Rankine again straightforward formula this minimum depth is formula is what it is the load intensity divided by what the unit weight of soil then 1 minus sine phi by 1 plus sine phi whole square it's a very basic formula asked in many of the examinations you should be knowing this formula right so phi is given 30 so q is given you see 171 and your uh, unit weight is given 19 you see this is kilonewton per meter square and this is what your kilonewton per meter cube so what will happen here what will happen here kilonewton will get cancelled i'll get in what meter and obviously this 1 minus sin phi and all has no units so 1 minus sin phi this will come what 1 minus sin phi will be 0 0.5 and this will be 1.5 giving me what 1 by 3 and square right so it will be 1 by 9 you see if you divide this is 9 right 171 divided by 19 is what 9 and 9 and get cancelled I get what 1 meter again very straightforward formula from what your soil mechanics and I am telling you whenever you are solving questions soil mechanics or geotech see whenever I am you know, solving questions from you know for your state examination SSC, JE and other examination even ESA prelims never use the calculator do the calculations yourself never use calculator only we are solving so questions of gate use the calculator otherwise do hand calculations 37th question a flat this is used as lacing so this is a flat means what a plate is used as lacing okay so they're asking you the maximum length of that lacing how to solve this question okay it's a lacing it's a plate the length is given 120 mm okay actually this is not uh, the length it is the width actually 120 mm and this thickness is given your 12 mm you have to find out the length how to find out this we can get from the maximum slenderness ratio right the maximum slenderness ratio of a lacing is how much tell me the maximum slenderness ratio for a lacing is how much tell me tell me what is the maximum slenderness ratio for a lacing you should be knowing this how much it is tell me write in the comment section write in the comment section 145 very good and slenderness ratio is what it is the L effective or the length of that particular member divided by what the minimum slenderness minimum radius of gyration right so this is maximum length divided by the minimum radius of gyration is equal to 1245 right because slenderness ratio is this so from here I can get what the L effective is equal to 145 into R minimum now how to find out the R minimum you see the cross section yes the cross section right if you see the cross section of this particular you know lacing yes so this is the thickness and this is the B so you see I will get 2i right okay so I can say ixx this is x ixx will be what bt cube by 12 and what will be iyy sorry yeah it will be bt cube by 12 and what will be iyy it will be tb cube by sorry I wrote wrong right no no correct correct it will be tb cube by 12 right now when I find R minimum, I will take what? I will take I minimum by A. So you can see that minimum one will be this one only, right? BT cube by 2 because T cube will be obviously less than B cube, right? So I can say from here that for this rectangular section, I can get the R minimum will be how much? It will be root under BT cube by 12 and area is what? B into T. So B we get cancelled, I get what? t square so t by root 12 and remember this fact remember this fact r minimum for this plates 
is what plates or flats is always t by root 12 remember this now i have derived this but examination you don't have so much time okay so directly you can find out this 145 t is how much given 12 so 12 divided by root 12 right 12 divided by 12 is what actually it is root 12 now you can do some calculations right little bit calculation is required you can do this calculation this i can say is 145 it is actually i can say 4 into 3 so 2 root 3 right so this can be written as what 219 into root 3 is 1.73 you can see obviously it is not this option and this option it will be around 500 thank you thank you civil tricks so it is how much are getting tell me answer it will be how much approximately you can tell me right 1 to 290 into 1.7 you can do right so what is the answer here tell me what is the answer here tell me 290 into 1.73 it is a very good so this is so in this question you see so many questions we solved they can only ask you the r minimum right they can only ask you the r minimum r minimum is how much r minimum of a lessing is how much it is nothing but t by root 12 here it will be how much it will be root 12 that is how much 2 root 3 or i can say 3.46 yes 3.46 right they can ask you the slenderness ratio it is 145 and if they ask you the length you can do this answer is 502 mm understood so many questions in one question 38 the extension of a three more questions okay then you know then krishna sir will teach you environment such analysis and engineering mechanics and rcc very important topics environment questions lot of environment questions are asked and sir will be you know guiding you through this so this extension of a circular bar tapering uniformly from d1 to d2 okay has the same extension of a uniform bar having how much diameter tell me what's the answer to this what's the answer to this ha ah, in the same link in the same link okay so my class will end and sir class will start so d1 to d2 and this is d if they have same extension okay so extension delta 1 or delta this is for tapered or this is for uniform so what will be this d remember this is what d1 root under d1 d2 i am not deriving it we can derive always but you have to remember this thing okay next question 39 question this for this course okay so this was from you know from steel structures it was from steel structures and then this is from what from strength of materials okay you can see all the types of questions are asked strength of metal but again basic formula again basic formula basic theory 39 question surveying please tell me the answer declination we have solved this question you know thing in you know some days before i took one class on compass surveying so we are solving this question tell me the answer so magnetic bearing is given okay so true bearing is that so true bearing is what magnetic bearing plus minus declination yes plus minus declination it will be what minus here why because it is west west is negative declination right so it is Minus here because it is given in west. So what is the answer here? Tell me, what is the answer? You added, Basnal Baba added, added कर दिया. Add नहीं करना है. Subtract. Okay, magnetic bearing minus declination because it is given what? West, west. So this is 123 degree 15 minutes minus 6 degree 30 minutes. What is the answer? अरे again A A writing. <laughs> Why you? How you got A Baba? We writing for the past answer. Okay. So 123 minutes 15 123 degree 15 minutes then 6 degree 40 30 right so subtract how much I'm getting 116 degree 45 understood everyone understood everyone okay how we subtracted see you can subtract six if you subtract six how much you'll get 117 and then 15 minutes then you subtract 30 that 30 also subtract if you are difficult in subtracting this will become what You have, to, you have to take one, so it becomes sixty. It becomes seventy-five, right? It becomes sixteen, right? So one hundred sixteen degree, and then forty-five minutes. So answer is this. Very straightforward, but you see, you are committing mistakes. <laughs> yes. When it is east, then add. When it is west, then subtract. Okay. Last question: Standard Excel load for tandem Excel. This is what pavement design, right? This is your pavement design. So what's the right answer here? What's the right answer here? 
tandem excel tandem not tridem tandem yes tandem not tridem this is for tridem excel right this is for tandem excel for tandem excel it is 148 gone this is for you know one single excel with two wheels single excel with two wheels is this okay single excel with one wheel is this what is tandem excel it is combination of what two excels are combined like this and this is tandem excel okay i have taken a lecture on you know i have taken a lecture on your uh, vehicle damage factor you can see there and tridem excel is what three excels combined like this okay this is tridem excel okay so i am drawing little fast okay so very good very nice okay so we solved many questions you can see that now will in uh, this questions will be repeated in the hpcl very less chance okay so again i am trying to say is that the aim of this session is not to tell you that which questions they will ask the aim of the session is to make you aware that what kind of questions they will ask you can see most of the questions were direct theory or direct numerical or direct formula so like this many you know sessions i have taken you can always see okay so this is again notice notice that i will tell that you can register for this grand mock test which is going to happen so please register the link is given description okay so like this so today we solved questions from variety of topics for hpcl previous year from the hpcl previous year like this i have taken a lecture on steel structures you can always see that lecture i have already taken lecture on geotech you can always see that lecture and tomorrow okay tomorrow we'll be solving many questions around 40 questions like this from only surveying okay so tomorrow 11 am tomorrow 11 am we'll be solving many questions on surveying okay tomorrow please attend this lecture 11 am 40 questions will be solving and i will be explaining the background theory also so thank you very much don't go anywhere okay stay tuned krishna sir will be taking over now okay and krishna sir will be discussing the questions on environment okay structural analysis concrete structures and engineering mechanics so very important portion is going to take of environment and analysis so please continue okay thank you very much see you tomorrow at 11 am bye in the same link sir will be taking the class question from the rcc and the structure but guys the more number of question they have asked from the environmental engineering so uh, whenever you are trying to revise your subject give the priority to environmental engineering first okay so let's solve this particular question which is question number 1 in front of you guys kindly read the question and let me know the correct answer guys okay i'm hiding myself so that you can read the question very well okay so tell me the correct answer for this one guys tell me the correct answer for this particular one good afternoon good afternoon good afternoon come fast guys please let me know the correct answer for this one what should be the answer for question number 1 in the analysis of structure by principle of virtual work which of the following force are assumed to do work and are not omitted tell me guys c very nice wali okay tell me guys which particular answer is correct you need to understand what is basically virtual work okay then only you can take the correct answer otherwise a uh, afrid b okay guys i think uh, you know about the work basically right what is basically work force into displacement in general right but the displacement should be in the direction of force itself okay now if we take the example of a uh, statement number 2 okay let us consider the reaction at the smooth pin or hinge which do not move now tell me guys if you have a structure in which there are certain support and that particular support will have certain amount of reaction but in the direction of reaction there is no displacement that means displacement value is zero then tell me guys how this particular reaction can do work it is not possible right so you can understand guys by this particular reaction we are not able to generate any kind of work in this particular structure correct so that's why guys b can be the wrong one right 
or we can say that definitely this particular uh, condition you are not uh, you can omit while calculating the work over here right so this one is wrong let's talk about the next one force normal to the direction of displacement now guys this is your direction of force and this is the direction of displacement now you know that guys work done is nothing as it is force into displacement but displacement should be in the direction of force itself right then only you can take it so again this particular force will not do any kind of work we need to remove this particular option correct now if you talk about the last one which is tension in the light in in extensible strength in extensible means it will not extend right that means delta should be equal to zero if delta is equal to zero again this particular condition will not do any kind of work so you need to remove this particular option but guys let's read the first statement the concentrated load on the mid span of a simply supported beam now guys you can see here this is a simply supported beam and uh, let us consider a load is to be there at the mid span so what will happen the beam will try to deflect in this manner now tell me guys in this particular case certain amount of deflection will be there let us consider delta and this is our force now tell me guys in the direction of force or in the direction of uh, any kind of load which is present over here we have certain amount of displacement so we are not able to remove this particular force while calculating the work you need to consider it right so that's why guys the correct answer should be a the correct answer should be a very nice civil trick next question guys which of the following is not classified which of the following is not classified as a part of refuse hello santu how are you tell me guys which of the following is not classified as a part of refuse you know that refuse means your solid waste basically so human excreta is not a solid waste yes because human excreta or human waste is go into the sewage part so that's why guys a is the correct answer for the problem okay very nice afrid very nice santu next question guys which is a standard uh, value and i think all of you know the particular standard value what should be the location of cog center of gravity this particular problem is related to the engineering mechanics center of gravity tell me guys okay wait a minute let me hide myself i think uh, you are not able to see the question uh, option properly right yes yes no issue no issue no issue now you are able to see the option properly guys okay now tell me the correct answer h by 3 okay very nice h by 3 h by 3 h by 3 very nice guys yes it should be d yes it should be d the center of gravity of a hollow cone is nothing as guys it is h by 3 from the bottom and if you calculate it from the apex or you can say the top it is basically 2h by 3 right direct answer you know that right so that's why d is the correct answer for the problem d is the correct answer next question guys in front of you which is based upon your population forecasting method right now you know that guys uh, this formula is a very general formula everyone can give the correct answer for this particular question and i hope all of you are able to give it okay very nice santu b wali b afrid b santu geometric increase method we know that guys this formula is nothing as to forecast the population by considering geometric growth rate right yes b is the correct answer for this particular question now you can tell me guys in this particular paper you may get a very simple type of questions right very simple type of questions next question is based upon your rcc uh and in this particular problem you need to estimate what is the value of limiting moment of resistance right what is the value of mr okay what is the value of mr you need to calculate it kindly solve this particular problem guys and you know that how to calculate the moment of resistance also okay so i am also doing guys you can also calculate the value and please let me know the correct value how much you are getting okay so in this particular case what they have show, uh, what they have given to us a beam is given to us guys whose cross section is known to us the value of width is 
200 and the effective depth value 132 okay santu i will check it d is equal to 400 the small d value they have given as a 400 okay now 16 mm dia reinforcement are there but the number of reinforcement are three okay so three bars whose dia is 16 mm now our task is to calculate the limiting moment of resistance that means mr limiting value now you know that guys how i can calculate the mr limiting it is qbd square now what is the value of q it is nothing as moment coefficient which is 0.36 fck k into j now what is the value of k for fe 500 that is basically 700 divided by 1100 plus 0.87 fy fy is 500 kindly calculate this value how much you are getting please let me know guys 700 divided by 1100 plus 0.87 fy so guys it is coming around 0 0.4560 okay now let's calculate the j value which is lever arm DAP factor 1 minus 0.42 k so 1 minus 0.42 into k value is 0 0.4560 so guys we are getting a value of 0 0.8084 okay can we calculate this particular value which is 0 0.36 fck is how much we are using 30 grade over here and k value is 0 0.4560 multiply by j value 0 0.8084 Calculate this value, guys. How much you are getting? 128. Okay, Santu. So, guys, we are getting a value of 3.9812. Correct? Now, let's put this particular value to get the value of MR limiting. Okay? Let's calculate MR limiting. MR limiting which is nothing as q b d square right so q value q value is equal to how much it is basically 3.9812 multiply by i will tell you about that also afrit how you can do it right how you can do it i will tell you about that so b is equal to how much b is nothing as it is given to us as a 200 okay now what about d d is 400 now make it square and multiply by 10 raised to power minus 6. Okay. Kindly calculate this particular value. How much you are getting? 3.9812 multiply by 200 multiply by 400 square. And multiply by 10 raised to power minus 6. So we are getting a value of 127.39 kilo Newton meter. Correct? Now tell me guys which particular option is very close to this one. Can I say that it is D? D is the correct answer d is the correct answer d is the correct answer very nice rajat afrit santu very nice now guys we know that we are not able to solve this part means after seeing the calculation you may have a question so how i can calculate this particular value without using calculator now i have already suggested uh, the student please remember some of the standard value which is uh, like a k value j value right so that you can use it directly in your examination okay kindly remember the values of such type of combination let me write over here guys which you may find in your examination mostly okay please remember these values so that you can use it in your examination directly okay let me write over here so that you can understand it so guys there are basically two combination they are trying to put in the question mostly one is fe415 and m20 grade right and the second combination which you may get in the examination like M30 and FE500. So such type of combination of grid of steel and grid of concrete, they are generally trying to put in the question. Now for such type of condition, please remember the value of K. How much it is? We have already calculated it. It is basically 0 0.4560 or you can write 0 0.45 also. Right? What is the value of J? It is almost 0.8 right and what is the value of q you know that guys after multiplying all th three val means all three values and multiply by 0 0.36 you may get 
please remember these three value guys for your examination purpose similarly you need to remember the value of k when you are using fe415 and it is 0.48 the value of j is again 0.8 approximately and let's calculate the value of q it is 0.36 fck is 20 k is 0.48 and this is 0.8 so this value is 2.76 so please remember such type of combination so that you can solve the problem in the examination without using calculator also okay now clear afrit okay very nice next question in front of you guys next question in front of you what is geldal nitrogen in sewage now this problem is related to your environmental engineering tell me guys what is geldal nitrogen it is a very nice it is sum of ammonia and organic nitrogen it is sum of ammonia and organic nitrogen which we call uh, which we call at as free ammonia plus organic ammonia it is the addition of free and organic ammonia that is known as geldal nitrogen understood that's why a is the correct answer for the problem next question again very simple guys very simple question now everyone can give the correct answer for this one right everyone can give the correct answer for this one what do you mean by elr tell me guys what is elr ecological light ratio ecological lapse rate environmental lapse rate or environmental light ratio you know that guys right it is a c basically c is the correct answer c is the correct answer environmental lapse rate environmental lapse rate very nice rajat wali afrit yamna santu next question is uh, related to your air pollution part in which you need to understand we have one air pollutant and its effect so you need to think about the combination which combination is not correct which combination is not correct d very nice rajat very nice very nice very nice santu very nice ozone ozone is not an component of acid rain right it is not a component of acid rain we know that guys due to ozone uh, we may have photochemical reaction that means a uh, pen condition will be there that is photochemical smog right but acid rain is not due to ozone part right that's why b is the correct answer over here sir for fe 500 can we use a point ah listen listen civil 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 trick let me explain this particular point if you have fe 500 let me write here something if you have fe 500 okay fe 500 now tell me what you have written basically it is basically 0.36 fck k into j into b into d square now what you have written basically it is nothing as it is the product of 0.36 k value and j value okay right okay so calculate it if you have m30 okay let's remove m30 okay rest of the value we will calculate so 0 0.36 0 0.8 and 0 0.456 so we are getting the same value yes we are getting the same value which is 0 133 or 1313 fck bd square you can use this one also there is no issue clear yeah. okay let's move to the next question which is related to muller breslau principle which is related to the muller breslau principle kindly read the question guys there are two statement which is given to us statement number one and statement number two and tell me guys out of these two statement which of the following are true c okay d okay guys uh c okay puja let me explain it let me explain it i think the second statement you uh, you haven't heard about it but guys this is also true i will explain it okay i will explain it 
okay so guys you know that the muller grass law principle is used to draw the influence line diagram as a deflection curve why does deflection curve basically so as per muller grass law principle you need to remove that particular stress function for which you have to draw the ild after removing it whatever deflected shape of the beam or deflected shape of the structure you may get that will become the ild for that particular stress function so the first statement is 100% correct the first statement is 100% correct 100% correct okay now what is maxwell reciprocal theorem do you remember it what is maxwell reciprocal theorem do you remember it let me show you that as per maxwell reciprocal theorem let us consider a load is applicable at this particular point whose value is 5 kilo newton okay and you may have certain deflected shape of the structure let us consider this one is delta 1 which we are getting okay let us suppose the same uh, means let us consider another point on the structure at the mid span let us consider this point is b and this point is a so this one is delta a and this one is delta b okay now as per maxwell reciprocal theorem what they, uh, he has suggested if you want to estimate this particular delta b right now you can see here guys the load is applicable at point a and it is very easy to find out the displacement in the direction of force itself right which is basically pl cube by 3i but if i want to estimate what is the value of delta b so as per maxwell, maxwell reciprocal theorem what you have to do basically guys you need to interchange you need to interchange the location of load and the location of displacement you will get the same answer what it means actually in place of point b i will place the load 5 kilo newton i will place the 5 kilo newton. and the deflected shape which you will get like this and this particular displacement is our delta a star right now this delta a star is nothing as it is equal to delta b only why it is so let me explain so as per maxwell reciprocal theorem you need to calculate the virtual work which is done by this 5 kilo newton and this 5 kilo newton. so how we can calculate this load multiply by this displacement and this load multiply by this displacement okay so can i write here guys it is basically 5 into delta b and 5 into delta a star okay now if you cancel it what you will get exactly delta b is equal to delta a star yes or no yes or no all of you know this yes or no tell me guys all of you know this yes yes now guys if we talk about yes very nice now if we talk about muller breslau principle what muller breslau principle says let's understand that also let's understand that also now let us suppose this is our simply supported beam now let us consider i wish to draw the ild for this particular reaction ba how i can draw it first you need to remove this particular reaction and give unit displacement in the direction of this reaction right give unit displacement in the direction of this reaction so whatever deflected shape of the beam you will get that is nothing as that is your ild for the stress function right so this one is what this one is ild for the stress function which is nothing as ild for va right now tell me guys in this particular case what you are doing actually you are considering this particular reaction as a one yes or no this reaction as a one and whatever deflected shape you are getting due to this particular force is nothing as this one only yes or no tell me guys what actually you are considering va is equal to how much unit load right or you can say that it is nothing as unit force so you have to give a unit force so that you will get a deflected shape of this right understood yes or no tell me guys so this is nothing as this is basically indirectly related to the maxwell reciprocal theorem only maxwell reciprocal theorem only right so that's why guys this particular statement is also correct s1 as s2 is correct that's why a is the correct answer for the problem 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू गाइस व्हिच इज रिलेटेड टू द एनवायरमेंटल इंजीनियरिंग पार्ट एंड दिस इज रिलेटेड टू योर सेडिमेंटेशन टैंक दिस इज रिलेटेड टू योर सेडिमेंटेशन टैंक काइंडली रीड इट वेरी वेल काइंडली रीड इट वेरी केयरफुली गाइस देन टेल मी द करेक्ट आंसर B. Okay, Santu. B. Yamna B. Very nice. Vikas B. Uh, Vishal B. Civil B. Okay. Let me explain what it is exactly. What is displacement efficiency? Guys, you know that there are basically two type of terminology in this particular sedimentation tank. One is detention time. What is detention time? It is a theoretical time for which water remain inside the sedimentation tank. Right? Theoretical time. and how you can calculate it it is very easy you know that guys whatever discharge we are putting which is qd and uh, let us consider the volume of the tank is v so let's calculate the detention time it is nothing as v by qd right and this is a theoretical formula to calculate the detention time of the water but in actual condition this particular detention time will be vary why it vary let me explain it you know that guys the sedimentation tank is open to environment right or you can say that it is open to atmosphere right so whatever water particle which is at the surface or at the top that particular particle may find some hindrance due to the wind also it may be possible wind is blowing in this direction it may be possible wind is flowing in this direction if it is flowing in this particular direction that means the particle will reach late on the outlet end if this particular direction is the wind so definitely our particle of water will try to reach at the outlet end as very fast right so in the actual condition the time or detention time will may vary and that's why guys we need to calculate the displacement efficiency clear so the displacement efficiency can be the ratio of what it is nothing as actual time upon detention time that is the reason clear Clear? Yes, almost same type of question or little bit, uh, little bit, but uh, थोड़ा सा और increase कर लीजिए. But almost you may get the same type of question in the that particular examination also. Okay. Now let's read the question number eleven, guys. Question number eleven in front of you. Please read the option very carefully. Recognize the wrong statement related to the characteristic of the rubbish in the Indian condition. What is rubbish? Basically, what is rubbish? What is rubbish? Anyone who can tell me the answer, who can tell me over here, guys? What do you mean by rubbish? Basically. combustible waste okay solid waste okay any other student who can tell me guys what do you mean by rubbish solid waste okay now what happened guys okay what you are saying as a an answer santu d rubbish include all waste except ashes okay any other student sewage waste no 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 rubbish is not a sewage waste it is not a sewage waste b option in the question exactly mean it that rubbish means rag paper piece broken piece of glass furniture and cardboard okay now tell me guys right now tell me in this particular case you need to find out the wrong statement not the correct one now let me explain one thing over here yes definitely rubbish is nothing as it is basically including rag paper piece broken piece paper of glass furniture and cardboard and the density of rubbish is this one is only guys 52 400 kg per meter cube 
Now, let me explain one more point over here, guys. If we talk about Indian city or MSW of Indian city, what happened? The 50% of the solid waste is nothing as it is biodegradable in nature or it is your food waste only, right? It is basically biodegradable waste. Or you can say that, guys, in your MSW, you may find more than 50% of food waste as a municipal solid waste. So the first statement is wrong because in Indian condition, we are not throwing such type of material more in our MSW, right? You are trying to sell this particular type of uh, things in the market as a raw material sometime or to Kabadiwala also, right? That is a general thing which is occurring in the India that I am telling over here, guys, right? It may be possible some people are doing that, some people are not doing. But most of the people are trying to sell such type of uh, such type of material to the Kabadiwala so that they can earn some money, right? But they are throwing only the food waste mainly, food waste, or you can say that the wet waste basically. So that's why, guys, the first statement is wrong, right? The rubbish constituent more than 50% of the total MSW? No, guys, it is wrong. So that's why the A statement is the correct answer. Clear? Next question is very, very simple, which is related to your uh, engineering mechanics part. Engineering mechanics part. Tell me, guys. We have only 20 questions, guys, which is uh, related to this topic only, right? Means uh, your RCC, structure, mechanics, and the uh, environmental engineering. A. Coplanar congruent forces. Kindly see the forces very, very carefully. This is one of the force. This is another force. Then this is another force. These are not coplanar, I think so, right? It should be congruent because all three forces are passing through a single point of application, right? They have single point of application. That's why they are congruent in nature. But they are non-coplanar because they are lying on a different plane. That's why C is the correct answer for the problem. Okay. I think you have done this particular question. Either you can solve this particular problem in the structure part or in the uh, strength of material, one and the same thing, right? So such type of question you can uh, have in the structure also or in your strength of material. So you have solved this particular problem. Yes or no? Tell me, guys. Have you solved it? Okay. Done. Already done. No? Already done. Okay, very nice. Now let's move to the next question, guys, which is related to your environmental engineering. The second stage BOD in the wastewater is also known as what? The second stage BOD is also known as what? What do you mean by second stage BOD? Till that, I will draw the graph. Please let me know the correct answer. Now you are able to give the answer correctly. Tell me, guys. It is nitrification demand. The first stage BOD is nothing as it is your carbonaceous demand. And the second stage is nitrogenous demand or nitrification demand. So carbonaceous BOD, CBOD and this one is nitrogenous BOD and BOD. Clear? So that's why B is the correct answer for the problem. Next question is related to the truss. Right? And uh, you can give the correct answer guys. And I have... I think it is very simple. It is very simple. D. Okay. Zero. 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 B. Okay. Zero. Zero. Very nice. Very nice. You know that guys. If I want to find out the force in this particular member, either I can solve the joint Q, then this member will have zero force. So that's why B is the correct answer for the problem. Okay. Next question, guys, which is uh, related to the distribution system. Distribution system, water distribution system or water supply system. Kindly read it very quickly, guys. Read it. Which of the following is the pipe network for water supply in which a closed ring of main pipe is formed around on the periphery of the area to be served. Radial system or it should be ring system. 
it is radial system or ring system radial system is a different one guys radial system is a different one i will explain it what is radial what is circular what is ring system i will explain both of them okay let me explain it let me explain both of them so that everyone can understand it should be ring system right circular system is also known as ring system ring system and ring system is the correct answer now let me explain both of them what is radial system let us suppose this is your water main this is your water main which is passing through the center of your city area right and let us consider this is your city now through this water main we have certain sub main pipe like this right which is trying to supply the water to the overhead tank which is located in this particular zone in this particular zone now through this particular over tank what will happen guys the water will get distributed nearby area right like this right like this so this is known as a radial system not a ring system in this case what we are trying to do basically we are trying to supply the water to the water main then it goes to the overhead tank then that overhead tank will try to supply the water to the zone which is allocated to that particular overhead tank right so that is basically radial system right but if we talk about ring system what is ring system in case of ring system what will happen whatever city you have guys on the outer edge of the, of the city we are trying to provide the main pipe water main pipe now through this main pipe there are sub main and branches right so that you can distribute the water at different location like this so that is basically ring system or circular system like this okay so this is our water main or main pipe clear so that's why guys d is the correct answer for the problem next question is a standard definition it is a standard definition guys standard definition please read it very carefully it is a standard definition which of the following is defined as under the rate of doing work by traveling sound wave in the direction of propagation of wave sound pressure or sound power the rate of doing work by traveling a sound wave in the direction of propagation of wave that is nothing as that is basically sound power power of sound it is a standard definition right it is a standard definition power of sound correct a is the correct answer for the problem next one is little bit uh, typical but i will explain guys in detail what it is the exactly okay now first read the question okay first read the question a uh, now they have put a dash over here is generally placed inside the tail exhaust pipe of an automobile to control the air pollution due to partially oxidized emission now let me explain what it is exactly let us suppose there is a vehicle and we have a exhaust pipe over here right we have a exhaust pipe over here right this is exhaust pipe now what happened guys in this particular case they are trying to put certain uh material over here and what type of material is this and what type of uh, material means catalyst and that catalyst is to be put it in this particular catalytic converter over here there is one catalytic converter this is catalytic converter now why we are using it let me explain it you know that guys whatever petrol you are using in your vehicle that may generate hydrocarbon carbon monoxide carbon dioxide and etc right now these gases are little bit harmful to the environment but what we are trying to do we want to reduce it to the less harmful gases that's why we are using catalytic converter in the automobile exhaust now this catalytic converter will have certain catalyst right certain catalyst like platinum palladium palladium and etc so such type of catalyst are trying to convert this harmful gases 
into less harmful gas right so our main task is to convert the harmful gas into less harmful gas clear so that's why b is the correct answer for the problem b is the correct answer for the problem next question you have done this particular problem have you done this particular question it is related to the environmental engineering also as well as your uh, fm have you done this particular question okay what should be the answer a 3.125 meter per second you can solve this particular problem in the environmental engineering also as well as your fm portion it should be 3.125 meter per second how you can solve it do you know that guys it is nothing as basically q is equal to a into v right a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2 a2 v2 what is a1 it is nothing as pi by 4 into 25 square multiplied by velocity which is 2 and a2 is again pi by 4 into 20 square we are not converting the unit over here it is not required in this case why because this area is in centimeter square and this unit is in meter per second again this particular area is in centimeter square and the unit of velocity is meter per second you will get as answer you can cancel it and ultimately you will get 3.125 meter per second as answer yes continuity equation now the last question guys last question of the session this is the last question now this particular value you have to remember for your examination purpose this is nothing as that that is a basic a standard value so if you know the standard value then only you can uh, write the correct answer otherwise you are not able to give the correct answer over here so let me explain guys there are basically three options which are correct basically over here means this one is correct this one is correct this one is correct so for air traffic jet take off at about 300 meter range if it is 300 meter range from where the jet is trying to take off so in that particular case the noise level can be allowed is 100 to 110 decibel okay for propeller type of uh, air traffic we can allow the noise level up to 90 to 100 for rail traffic it should be 90 to 110 but for heavy load traffic for highway this value is wrong actually this value is 80 to 90 decibel right so please remember all the values which is written over here right all are the correct one but only this particular answer is wrong so that's why guys this particular answer is the correct answer for the question understood heavy road traffic for heavy road traffic it should be 80 to 90 decibel okay let okay okay we have one more question one more question last question guys and it is related to the engineering magnets last question yes coulomb friction you know that guys coulomb friction is what this is the last question coulomb friction is the friction between what dry you know that it is basically related to the dry surface we have learned this particular part in the engineering mechanics so dry surface is the correct answer c is the correct answer for the problem okay so that's it guys from our side and I hope you have enjoyed today's session uh, by Sachadi sir and me right and uh, if you have any doubt any query guys you can ask me anything right but I hope you have loved this particular session in which we have discussed all the questions which is already asked in your HPCL examination correct okay so thank you so much guys thank you so much for joining the session uh, we will meet soon on the next session and definitely uh, we will try to put more number of questions in different sessions so that you can have a different variety of question also and you can practice well in this particular uh, YouTube channel, right? So thank you so much guys. Let's close the session and let's meet in the next one. Bye guys. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye. Take care.